Hello there. This is a review of Signal and Session Messengers, kind of a comparison. And I'll go over the features that are kind of differentiating them and as well as are similar in both of them. So first of all, they're both end-to-end -end encrypted. Signal uses its own protocol. Session uses its own protocol. Session used to use the Signal protocol, but because Session is primarily a decentralized product, their own Session protocol works better for their purposes. They both have support for the most common operating systems, Linux, Mac, Windows, Android, iOS. Both of them have APKs available. And in Sessions case, you can also download it from uh, FDroid, the unofficial version, as well as if you want the uh, official version through FDroid, you can add your, the repository that they provide. As far as open source software goes, Signal is mostly open source, but I put no there because their anti-spam code is proprietary. Everything else is open source. However, they have had some significant delays in r revealing their open source code. So there are some questions as to how open it truly is. Now, Session is fully open source. Decentralization. Well, Signal is a standard client server product, and it is, it is a centralized server that runs Signal or servers. Session is mostly decentralized. It primarily runs through the Oxen network, which is a network of between 1,600 and 1,800 servers, what I've seen. As low, and at times, it's been as low as 1,500 servers. However, there are three seed nodes that are hard-coded into the code of session and file attachment servers that are not decentralized. So in order for session to talk to the network, it first needs to contact one of the seed nodes. And there are three of them. For instance, recently in Iran, they were able to block session simply by blocking those three servers and voila, session dies unless you use a VPN to connect to it. So yes, it is mostly decentralized, but it's not completely. Then onion routing. So onion routing is where connections are routed over multiple hops before it gets to the endpoint. And each one of those hops is encrypted with specific encryption. So each of the layers of quote unquote onion are encrypted. So there the onion routing comes from. Signal is not onion routed since it's standard client server where a session is onion routed. So when your connections, so when your session app talks to the session server, it gets routed over three nodes and none of those nodes know everything about the connection. So there's no way the session server knows where you ultimately came from, what was your IP address. So it preserves anonymity. Signal does have a directory. If you punch in a phone number in Signal, it kind of tells you if that user has Signal or not. Um, session has no directory, so there is no way to connect to someone on Session unless you know what their Session ID is or a name that links to the ID. Anonymous sign-up. Well, Signal is not anonymous. You have to provide your phone number, and your phone number, I believe it needs to be a mobile phone number. So the cell phone, you can't just provide a VoIP number and expect to be accepted to Signal. Signal uses Twilio, it's a third party company for doing the, verif doing the verification of those numbers. So session is completely anonymous. When you sign up, it simply just gives you the session ID and says, here you go. No other questions asked. It doesn't ask for emails or phone numbers or name, dates of birth or anything like that. And the identifier in Signal's case is phone number. And in Session's case, it is a randomly assigned session ID created during the account creation process. Multiple identities, meaning having multiple accounts. Uh, Signal can have one identity per phone number. So if you have multiple phone numbers, multiple cell phones, yes, you can have multiple identities. However, if you don't have multiple phones, you're limited to just the, the one Signal account. There's probably some hacker who has figured out how to get multiple identities, but I don't. Session, you can have as many session IDs as you want. The session program itself, the application, does not have multi-session IDs built into it but you can download a different version. If you're on Linux, you could download the Flatpak or the Snap or the App Image or the Debian version. 
or you could even compile it yourself. And each one of those are different so you could have each an identity for each one of them. I believe the upcoming pro version of Session, which is a pay for version, will allow you to have multiple identities within one Session app. Alternative ID. So with Signal, no, that's not possible. It's just your phone number is your ID. In Session, you can purchase an Oxen name system name that then links to your Session ID. After all, Session runs on the Oxen network. And this network also runs a blockchain called the Oxen blockchain. And into the Oxen, Oxen blockchain is included Oxen naming service, kind of like a DNS in the, in the internet world. But it is built into the blockchain. So it's a decentralized naming server. And you can purchase a name. It currently costs seven Oxens. And you can have multiple names. And each one of those names can link to the same session ID or they can link to different session IDs. So what do you do if you want to have a session name and you don't have any Oxen cryptocurrency? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can always go to privacyproshop.com and click on add to cart on the session messenger name purchase. View cart, proceed to checkout, choose how you want to pay. And if you're paying with cryptos, you only need to give where you're from, like in this case, United States. Zip code, you can put your email. I recommend you put it in, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And click place order. Then you open up your wallet, your crypto wallet. In this case, I have Monero. Scan the QR code, there it goes. And I'm gonna send the money. And in a little bit, it should verify that the payment went through. And there it completed. You scroll down to session name registration form. Click continue. Type in a name. Hello, for instance. You copy your wallet ID, wallet address. Paste it in there. You get your session ID from here. Copy. Paste it. There it is, and you register your name, and there it is, registration successful. Oh, you can test it. Open session, click on plus, new message to hello, next, and it should link to your note to self. Yep, it did. Address book scouring. When you create a Signal account, the directory publicizes that, hey, such and such person is now using Signal who have your phone number in their address books. That's kind of a feature that a lot of people don't like, especially privacy conscious people. Session has no directory, has no way of accessing your address book, has no way of knowing what the other people's session, session IDs are. So Session doesn't do anything like that. Hiding your IP address. Well, Signal doesn't hide your IP. What that means is your phone or your computer, the Signal app connects to Signal servers. Signal server knows what your IP address is and sends the information back and forth. Whereas with Session, because it is onion routed, it preserves your IP address as confidential. So your IP address does not get sent to Session and they, they have no way of knowing where you came from, which is very useful if you're in a dangerous situation. For instance, in a country where they're going after people who are not kowtowing to the, to the government. Then we go to multi-device support. That means you can have the same account on multiple devices. Signal allows it to happen as does session. However, because it is a decentralized system, those discussions are not always in sync. They usually do get back in sync, but it may take a while. So if you have answered on one device and then you want to continue the discussion on another one, it usually is just fine, but not always. Then we'll go to message retention on server. So those times when you're not connected to the network, that's when message retention comes to play. Signal, based on the information that I was able to figure out, it holds your messages and your files and whatnot on the Signal server for up to two weeks for the device to connect to it. However, as soon as every device is connected and downloaded the information, it gets deleted off the server even before two weeks. Whereas Session holds all of those messages for two weeks in a swarm. A swarm is a grouping of five to seven Session service nodes that are associated or assigned to that a range of Session IDs. Based on where your Session ID falls in, that's where your messages will be stored in encrypted format for two weeks. 
And then as soon as two weeks is gone, the oldest ones get dropped off. Spoofing protection in this case means that nobody can pretend that they're you. Signal has some mechanisms for protecting that. For instance, you um, on your phone, you use a QR code to get your computer signed up, for instance. It also has passcodes that you can set that you have to punch in the passcode in order for you to be able to join Signal on that device. With Session, because you have created, you simply just recreate the account using the recovery code, but in as many devices as you want. And since you are the only one who has the recovery phrase, not recovery code, but recovery phrase, you're the only one who can restore it. And then encrypted private group chat. Yes, uh, Signal has it. Uh, you can have a thousand people as members in it, in a group. Session, same thing. However, it limits you to 100 members at the time at this time then we have go to public chat rooms uh signal does not have those they're like if you're familiar with telegram groups it's possible to have public groups where anyone can join and join in the conversation uh, session has something similar they call them communities they just changed the name from session open groups to session communities. Anyone can set up one of those. It requires some software and a virtual private server where you install it, but it's a, just a couple minute install and you'll be able to run your own public chat room. Very popular for various different topics. Again, those are not encrypted, but they're anonymous because everything gets onion routed. Then we're looking at voice and video calls. Signal has those, they work great. Session has those, both work fine. However, if you do use those, that connection is not onion routed. It's peer to peer. So your IP address gets exposed to the stun server at uh, the Oxen Privacy Tech Foundation, as well as the person you're talking to will be able to know what your IP address is. So you lose your IP address protection at the moment if you use the call video or voice calling function. That is supposed to change in the future when LokiNet, which is the anonymous internet layer, gets fully implemented and it gets implemented into session. Don't hold your breath. It's been in the works for quite a while already. And we'll go to conference calls. Signal has those, session does not. Uh, that would require a lot of bandwidth. All of those video streams would have to be routed through a server. Session has chosen not to implement those. And we'll look at attachment sizes. Signal limits you to 100 megabyte atta attachments, whereas Session limits you to 6 megabytes. And that is because the o Oxen Privacy Tech Foundation, OPTF, runs file servers those file servers are coded into the session app. You could technically change that to be your own file server, but then you would have to recompile your own session app. And again, limited six megabytes. So session is pretty much useless for sharing videos. For photographs, yeah, it's fine. Notifications, signal even in a de-googled phone, like I have a de-googled phone, it works great. They have the notifications built into the APK file. Where a session, terrible. I very occasionally get a timely notification on the on the Android. On the computer, so the, the session app on the desktop, it seems to work fine. So there's really no problem there. The notifications pertain to the mobile version. I have to open it up, take a look, make sure that there's no messages. Kind of annoying. I hope they can fix that. If you have a standard Android phone, it can use the Android Fire, this is called Firebase or something like that, which is the Google default notification system. It uh, apparently it works better. I hear it's not perfect, but it works better. Backups, Signal allows you to back up all your messages and files and whatnot, conversations, but it only works on the mobile. It does not work on the desktop app. And there is no cross-platform re restore. So you can't restore from iOS to Android or Android to iOS. Session has no backup. So don't delete your conversations that you want to keep. <clears throat> and message delivery speed. Well, Signal is a centralized system. So yes, it's fast. You send a message, boom, it's through. With Session, it's slower. I mean, it's okay but it's nowhere near nearly as fast as um, a centralized system like Signal. So 
signal within second within a second or two you get a notification whereas with session it might take 10 20 seconds to get for the message to go through usually it's fast much faster than that then overall user experience signal is really really good i have to say it's a fantastic piece of software session so the user experience is fair it's decent but it's not fantastic like signal is Official support with Signal, it seems like they have a knowledge base and they have a bug submission thing. And uh, Session goes even further. There's an FAQ, there's knowledge base, you can submit bugs. And there's a support community uh, on the Session app. You just open up the Session and join one of the open groups or what, what are called communities. Join the Session community and you'll be able to ask questions and there's thousands of people in there who can answer your questions. Then project funding. Uh, Signal, it's uh, really the benevolence of Brian Acton is keeping it afloat. He has given them at least $108 million. Signal is a massive system, uh, so it really needs Brian Acton at this point. They are also asking for donations from the users. Maybe they're getting some, hopefully so, because Signal is a great program. I'd love, love it to be able to continue. Session, uh, its project funding came from the uh, initial coin offering. So when Oxen was initially offered, they sold a bunch of coin and they were able to um, get funding that way. So the Oxen Privacy Tech Foundation receives 9,240 Oxen every seven days. And then, of course, they get some donations. Then the big thing is network funding. Currently, Signal is really dependent on Brian Acton. Brian Acton is Signal Foundation. He is the only member of the foundation. So whatever he says goes. The system must be very, very, very expensive because they have 40, 50, 100 million users, some really, really high number of users. Hopefully, Brian Acton keeps on doling out the cash. Then Session, on the other hand, runs over those 16 to 1800 servers that are crypto coin incentivized so the operators of those nodes get their rewards every two or three days 16 and a half oxen coin that pays hopefully for the running the network and then oxen privacy tech foundation also funds a part of the network because they run the seed nodes and they run the file ser attachment servers and they run up to 10 percent of the nodes and of course so of course they get all of the rewards from those nodes and then finally we'll go to the long-term viability of these again Long-term viability of Signal at this point depends completely on Brian Acton. Session is partially dependent on the Oxen Privacy Tech Foundation. They have provided the employees who have done the coding of this thing. Even though it's an open source project, it is still coded by the employees of the Privacy Tech Foundation. And if that funding were to end, the development of session would end at least the rapid development of session would end even though the system would still likely stay up somebody would probably take up running the seed nodes and the file attachment servers but the development pace would certainly slow down a lot if the optf were to go bust so that's that for the presentation if you have any questions contact me at privacy pro shop on session